Hello viewers, after many years of waiting we finally have a new Forza Motorsport game and this is my review of it. I've had the chance to play for about 15 to 20 hours and I will go over the following categories. So if you want to skip to a certain one there are timestamps in the description. As ever get yourself subscribed, there's going to be plenty more Forza content but let's get into it. Okay, let's begin with the Builders Cup. This is the brand new single player career mode within Forza Motorsport and it is presented differently than before. It encourages you to stick with a car and to tune it up over the course of a championship. Now in general, I felt like this was a fun and very playable mode. It did get a little bit repetitive, you could say. I would say that the pacing of this mode felt a little bit off in the sense that at the beginning, whilst you are in slower road cars which is quite normal i said the races or the events were actually quite long even the first championship was a five race event and when you combine that with all the practice laps you have to do it took about an hour and a half to two hours to to get through this and perhaps some variation in the race length would have been a bit nicer to have some short ones at the beginning and then and then slowly build up to some some longer ones i actually quite enjoyed the process of building the car or going along a couple of races uh, adding to it improving it to keep ahead of the competition and you do kind of have to do that otherwise the ai will easily beat you if you don't tune up your car the segment scores were actually quite fun i i really did actually quite enjoy it and um you know trying to perfect each little sector was a nice little challenge uh, so it gives you like a timer at the bottom and you kind of have to try and beat that and i actually enjoyed the challenge of doing that i would say that overall the practice it does get quite repetitive. You, you're forced to do a couple of laps practice on each track before you do the race. It did get sometimes repetitive, especially if you didn't upgrade your car or if you already know the track, you didn't really want to do it, you didn't want to jump into the race. So sometimes it felt like a little bit unnecessary and uh, it was just really increasing the amount of time it took to, uh, to get through the Builders Cup. In terms of upgrading the cars, now this has a very different system compared to before where you're kind of locked in with car points rather than just money and you do have to level up the car to get certain upgrades. Now, I felt like this was a really unnecessary change in Forza Motorsport before you had a lot of freedom to kind of tune the car exactly how you wanted or to upgrade it. But here you're kind of locked in with certain levels and I felt like it got a bit repetitive as well because you're unlocking certain upgrades at the same levels and therefore, as you go through a Builder's Cup, you're just going to do the same upgrades every time, um, roughly in the same order. So whilst this Builder's Cup does have some issues, I think, especially with the, the levelling and unlocking system, I think it was still fun to play and I will look forward to trying to get through all of it. I can't give an idea on exactly how long it's going to take, but the first set of events did take about 10 hours. They are quite lengthy when you're committing to five or six or sometimes four races in a championship. There were some events which were just one race, which were usually the ones on the far end. But for the most part, you're looking at sort of an hour and a half to try to get through each one. Okay, next up, progression and economy. So just in terms of how the money in the game plays out. I've said the money was actually quite hard to come by. It didn't really give you a huge amount. Sometimes you're winning a championship and getting about 35,000 credits. And that was with VIP membership. So if you buy the premium version of the game, you get a VIP, which does actually help out with money. Uh, cars aren't actually too expensive, strangely enough. I looked in the car list and if you filter it to most expensive, you'll see that the most expensive cars are about 400 and something thousand credits, which isn't a huge amount. So I think that most of the cars are affordable, but in general, it doesn't really hand you a million things. I mean, with VIP, again, it does give you quite a lot of cars at the start. But other than that, I would say that you do have to kind of work for uh, the cars that you want. We've already touched upon it, but car leveling to unlock parts, it seemed like a very unnecessary change. It kind of just removes some of the freedom that you're kind of used to in Forza. And for me, it was a strength of Forza. And just to confirm that buying the same car twice means you do have to unlock all the parts again. So I had this Aston Martin Vantage, I ranked it up, but then I bought another one. And then yes, the new car starts at level one. And that just seemed a bit unnecessary because I've already kind of driven an Aston Martin Vantage. There is the option to rent cars, and this is a bit of a shortcut. If you can't afford it or don't want to afford it, uh, you can just rent. And I think this is a good addition to the game. It kind of streamlines the game a little bit more. So you don't really have to worry about money too much if you can just rent a car. Okay, on to the physics. Now for me, the physics feel familiar compared to previous Forza games. They feel very approachable very easy to pick up and play, which has always been a strength of Forza. 
I would say that the handling does feel a little bit more loose compared to before, especially in some of the faster cars, surprisingly. Even the LMP1 cars, which have a lot of downforce, they felt like they were very oversteery. In terms of the curbs, they do feel improved. Uh, Forza 7 had quite a bit of an issue where you almost collide with the curb and it would cause a lot of glitches, but no glitches to report of here. The curbs all felt very detailed, felt a lot better and more consistent. If you hit some of the big sausage curbs, for example at Laguna Seca, it would throw you off and you did have to be really mindful of that. Some curbs, for example at Kyle Army, they wanted to rotate the car and they did feel a little bit unpredictable as if I really wanted to not use them. So some of them were a bit strange, the feeling. But in general, the curbs are a massive improvement. Now the collision physics in the game, for me, felt quite clumsy at, at points. It really is a deterrent to try to avoid uh, contact with other cars. There are some moments where you're getting stuck on another car and it, it just felt a bit silly at points. But that was at low speed. At high speed, it feels a little bit more realistic. You know, if you smash into another car, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. If you really feel the hit and it feels quite satisfying in a weird way. In terms of the wet weather physics, now these were quite simple in my opinion. It felt like you just have the dry level amount of grip and then you just turn it down a little bit. And then that's your wet weather grip. So there wasn't much complexity to how this was applied, but you definitely do feel a difference. You go into a corner, you try to turn in, and it's like, whoa, okay, yeah, it's understeering. There's definitely less grip compared to when it was dry. So there is a noticeable difference in grip. Uh, it wasn't always consistently applied, but we'll get to that later. In terms of the wheel physics, they've done it quite well. It's, it's an improvement on Forza 7, and the wheel is very playable, I think, this time around. It does require changing some settings. So overall, the sets of physics in this game are solid, reliable, familiar, uh, not always perfect, but I think they do a good job overall. Next up is gameplay. I just want to go through some notes on the, some of the changes they've made here. Manual with clutch doesn't work the same as it did before. You used to be able to just power shift and be very lazy with your technique. But this time around, I was trying my old technique where you just slide your finger across clutch and then gear up. It didn't really work. And in fact, I was getting quite a lot of engine damage until I upgraded the car with a new flywheel and new transmission. And then I was able to do it. So the car parts you have installed on the car does determine how lazy you can be with your gear shifting with manual with clutch. If you look at the leaderboard, a lot of people weren't using clutch. A lot of people just using manual. So perhaps uh, manual might be the new best option. Pit stops, tyre wear, tyre compounds. These are all very nice additions to motorsport and much needed, I would say. In a motorsport game, these are kind of staple things that you would expect to see. And now that they're here, I'm quite happy to have them. I think for all of these things, pit stops, tyre wear and tyre compounds, they're all implemented in a very simple and approachable way. Nothing too complex that you're not going to understand. In terms of the tyre wear, this is something fairly new in the sense that the tyres do go off eventually. I had a race where... I started on the soft tyre, it probably wasn't the right tyre because at the end I just had no grip. So the tyres just do drop off quite quickly and quite suddenly towards the end. So you do have to make sure you choose the correct ones. Track rubbering in, a new feature. I didn't really notice the difference of it. I really experimented with it, but I couldn't really feel much of a difference. It's going to have to be something I will test a lot more in the future, but for now I didn't really notice much difference. The penalty system, it actually works very well. I think it doesn't get everything dead right, but in general it is a good deterrent to driving badly. So you shouldn't cut corners, you shouldn't smash into other people. Now there were moments, of course, where you know I'd lunge in from miles back, smash a car out of the way, and I wouldn't get a penalty. So it doesn't get everything. But sometimes, you know, if you egregiously cut the course, then you are going to get sort of an 11 second penalty. And it eliminates the need for the tyre walls, which was a bane of everyone's life in Forza 7. And the tracks do look a lot better without them, I must say. So I feel like the gameplay and the overall vibe of the track was a lot better and a lot cleaner than before. In Forza 7, there were tyre walls everywhere. People would hit the tyre walls, tyres would be flying across the track, there would be debris everywhere, and it would just seem really overly chaotic. But here it just feels a lot cleaner, and they've got rid of all that unnecessary littering of the track. Okay, graphics and presentation. Forza is usually a game that prides itself on the way it looks, and normally does a very good job, and I think there is no exception here. Forza Motorsport does look exceptional. When you load into the menu, it's like, okay, yeah, this is a good looking game. The scale of the circuits feels good. For example, racing at the Nürburgring, I've raced there a few times this year, and just the overall look of the track, the detail of it, the scale of it, from one end to the other to the horizon, for me, they do a good job of it. The exact profiling of some of the corners isn't quite right. Like, for example, turn two at Nürburgring, for me, it felt a little bit off compared to reality. 
There are some moments which I feel like the game lacks sharpness. There is a slight dullness to the look of the game. And this is going to, I guess, depend on the settings you use. I'm playing on Xbox Series X. But if you're going to be on a high-end PC, then sure, this is going to look a lot better. I do feel like this game, it lacks a genuine overall sharpness. It does have a slight dullness to the texture, I would say. There are some moments, for example, the podium ceremony, I felt like this was quite a dull ceremony. It didn't look amazing. It, it looked actually quite dated, if I'm honest. And some of the liveries didn't look too sharp either. But the way that it presents, let's say, some of the weather conditions, it is quite spectacular. The sun, the fog, the rain, it does feel quite strong and intense. Maybe over the top at times, rather than outright realistic, but it does but it does feel quite spectacular. It does feel like, wow, well, okay, yeah, yeah, this is quite dangerous here, racing at the night in the rain. Uh, it does feel quite ropey. Photo mode seems quite unchanged, and the way it looks, you know, I'm probably not using all the right settings here, but um, just this sort of, without changing any settings, it didn't look amazing but i think this is going to be a mode where you, you do have to really fine tune all the settings to make the photo look amazing in terms of the hud and the general presentation of the game i think it's quite minimalistic simple it conveys the information you need it's easy to read so it does everything in a very functional manner so the menus feel very sleek and elegant i i, I do like the main menu you could argue that the tuning screen and the post-race screen do feel quite dull they're very dark gray there's not much going on it's a bit monotonous the podium ceremony, as I mentioned, there's something about this podium ceremony, I don't know why, I just don't really like it, it just feels very dated. And something I really noticed in this game is the lack of real motorsport sponsors. So it kind of ruins the immersion a little bit in the sense that you're playing a motorsport game and therefore you're probably familiar with a lot of motorsport sponsors. But going around a lot of the tracks and even if you go into the driver editor, there's a lot of these sort of fake sponsors, which is, you know, it's nothing wrong with it. At the same time, it'll be nice to have sort of like real genuine motorsport sponsors to really sort of boost the immersion and make it feel a lot more realistic. Now, there's three modes you can play this game on performance, performance RT and visuals. And I tried it on all three. I actually liked performance or performance RT. Visuals was meant to give the best visuals, but the, the lack of frame rate really kind of killed it for me. But what I would say is that the game does run very smoothly. You know, you are tackling quite a lot of uh, cars on the track alongside weather conditions and changing weather conditions and changing time of day so there is a lot for it to handle and i never really noticed any sort of lack of frame rate or glitches or slowdowns or anything like that okay on to the multiplayer this is definitely a big switch up compared to previous titles and to be honest i think they've done a good job of it i actually enjoy the new format here in previous uh, Forza titles you had quite a lot of freedom to join any sort of hopper that you liked wh whichever class you liked racing but this one is a bit more preset and predetermined so you join races at set times and before the race starts you have time to practice and just add to qualifying time and then you jump into the race and I quite enjoyed the overall format and the feel of this so you jump in you do the race and once the race finishes you have time just to jump into the next hopper before that begins and so on and so on so i had a couple of races not many one of the main races i did have at hakone here in the honda was actually incredibly fun it was actually a really good race i chose the soft tire turned out to be the wrong call because i ran out of grip at the end of the race as you can see the medium tire was actually the right decision so it adds an element of strategy here having the the tire compounds to to deal with also the, the amount of fuel in the car is something to consider so there's definitely a lot more depth to the racing in, in this sense, the fact that you had to preserve your tyres or choose the correct tyres and then choose the right strategy. And I, I really enjoyed that. So I can't give you a sort of a complete review of the multiplayer because I can't really do that until we've really played when everyone has got the game. And I'm not just playing against a couple of other reviewers. But um, from what I did play, it was very good. And I think there's definitely a lot of hope here. Safety rating and driver rating, this is a really good addition and of course it's something that plagued Forza in the past which is you know, shameful rammers of course, but uh, this time around I think multiplayer should theoretically be a lot cleaner, especially over time once you get settled into the lobbies against uh, players of a similar rating to you. Okay, on to the AI in the game. Now they were much spoken about in the sense that they were a lot sharper, they were a lot more intelligent and faster and... Here's the thing with the AI. If I had to really summarize it very simply, when they're around each other and around you, they seem to be a bit dumb. But when they're on their own, 
they can go genuinely very quick and they are quite good to race against. So the general formula I was finding, let's say I'm starting at the back, they drive towards turn one in two lines and then you dive up the inside because they don't cover the inside and they don't utilize all of the space available. So it's quite easy to overtake them even on like seven out of eight difficulty, which I was playing on here. And then one or two or three of them at the front would be like genuinely fast and good to race against. So in that sense, lap one was always a bit of a mess. But after that, it kind of settled down. And it was like, okay, you know, these guys, they've got some good pace and I'm struggling to keep up. This is actually a good battle. There are some moments though, when you get close to them, they just get spooked. You can really easily kind of just like throw them off their line and they just drive off the track. Sometimes they just randomly drive off the track way ahead of you. For some reason, they're just parked up on the side for no reason. They sometimes break mid corner, even on high difficulties. But what I would say is the consistency between races was good in the sense that I played on seven out of eight difficulty and I'll go from race to race to race to race. And the guys at the front would have a very similar pace to me. And I felt like that was really good. It was good because I was having a good genuine battle. There were some races, yeah, where I'd tune the car better and I would overpower them and I would win quite easily. But in general, the consistency was, was quite good between races. Let's take a look at the track list. Now, I felt a little bit underwhelmed i would say with the 20 locations in the game it's still a very healthy amount 20 20 locations so we can't complain too much but when you consider that forza 7 are 32 it really does feel like a step down and when you flick through the list from left to right you actually get to the end of the list a little bit too soon and you think oh, okay yeah there's there's a few missing here that i would have liked to see and even when you go a little bit deeper and look at the variations or the configurations within each location. For example, Le Mans doesn't have the Bugatti circuit. Uh, Nürburgring doesn't have the Nordschleife. So the locations feel a little bit short and sometimes the configurations feel a little bit limited as well. On the upside, Turn 10 have confirmed that they are adding a lot of tracks post-launch. And I think that this is where this game is gonna be quite strong, I would hope, in the sense that they're gonna add a lot of content after the game is launched of course you can make the argument that it should be there at the beginning but that's not really how games work anymore unfortunately so we are going to see a lot of additions including yas marina is going to be added soon nordschleife is confirmed as well amongst others so there are more tracks on the way but for now it does feel quite limited and let's just note that every track has dynamic weather and dynamic time which is a very solid development Onto the car list, now there's 500 plus at launch, is a decent all-round list, covers a lot of bases. You could argue that it lacks some of the depth. So just like the tracks, I would say that it's a bit of a shame that there's less compared to the previous game, and you do notice that. However, it's not a bad list. There's definitely a good amount here. One thing I would say is that there's a lack of depth in certain categories, so we do have sort of standalone cars here and there. In some categories, let's say for example our racing Forza GT, it looked like there's a lot of repeated cars on the grid and, and perhaps a lack of newer cars. Of course the cover car, the Cadillac, was a nice addition, but there aren't too many of the new hypercars. Uh, some of the LMP1 cars are quite dated, same with the GT3 cars. There are perhaps too many Forza Edition cars, which you could say artificially bolster the car count. So these cars are just cars that are already in the game, but then they just have a wide body kit and a bit more power so i definitely think you can make the case that you'd rather just have some genuinely completely different cars rather than a repeated car with a body kit on it weather and dynamic time this is a very big feature of this game and it's one that i think that turn 10 will be proud of there's a lot of weather conditions available and they're available on every track which i think is a big upside it does look spectacular when you're driving through Le Mans at night in the rain, perhaps a bit over the top, and you could argue the rain actually looks a bit more like snow. But that's in terms of how it looks. In terms of how it feels, the grip was quite inconsistently applied, I would say. So for example, on this Lime Rock race, it started off dry, so I was on slicks, and then it started raining, but I didn't have to pit for wet, so I was still able to drive around, despite what looks like incredibly wet conditions. So I wasn't really sure what the best tire was to be on. And then on this Le Mans race, similar kind of thing, it started raining and then very suddenly I have no grip and I crash. So I wasn't always sure what tyres were the best ones to be on or exactly how much grip I had depending on what the weather was. One thing about the dynamic weather is, yes it is available on every track, but you can't exactly control 
in what way it changes. So when you set up a free play race, for example, there is just a setting for variable and you can't determine exactly what that is. You can't say, okay, I want it to go from extreme wet and then to dry out at the end. You can't say that, it just does it. It will just change in a way that it decides. In terms of the time scaling, you can fast forward the game by 24 times. So you can do a whole day cycle in one hour. I did notice that the changes from, let's say from, from daytime to nighttime, it wasn't completely linear. So sometimes it would just suddenly change within the course of a couple of seconds and it would just suddenly become dark. A little bit of an immersion break. It wasn't like completely genuine dynamic. It felt like more a bit of a script to me. Overall, this is a really solid addition to the game. They've definitely improved it. I think it really crippled Forza 7. But this time around, they've done a good job. The game runs in a stable manner, despite a lot of settings you're using. You're using dynamic time at night with 24 cars. It works just fine. In terms of controller or wheel on this game, now Forza has traditionally always been a game for the controller, I would say, and I think this is still the case here. However, they definitely have improved the implementation and the use of a uh, racing wheel. I'm using the Fanatec. A DD with a McLaren rim and after a lot of tuning the game did feel pretty good out of the box it won't feel good I, I must say that so don't expect it to feel amazing straight away you are going to have to fine tune your settings in terms of the balance between a controller and a wheel which one's faster it's hard to say at this point in time I'm going to have to test it a bit more extensively but I would say that I was able to lap consistently on both and roughly at the same speed so that is an encouraging sign in terms of the sound forza has done a good job on this game uh, i do feel very immersed especially wearing a headset and uh, you know going over curbs going over grass different surfaces collisions as well you do feel quite immersed i would say that the balancing between certain things isn't quite there so just like other things in the game you are going to have to fine tune the settings to make sure it is perfect but that isn't too much of an issue so you can certainly hear echoes as well as you drive close to walls and under tunnels. You could argue it's a little bit overdone, it's trying a bit too hard, it does make the game feel very alive. There are some weird issues like for example driving this Porsche here, there's some really weird sound with the engine, it, it kind of sounded a bit off. Let's take a look at the modes in the game. Now of course we have the Builders Cup, feature multiplayer, private multiplayer, Rivals is there and Rivals is always a mode that I've always liked and there's leaderboards for everything and I've always felt that like this is a strength of Forza and that is something that remains here. So Rivals mode is a, is a mode that I think I'll keep coming back to and keep enjoying. The liver creator as ever kind of similar I'm not much of a liver creator so I'm not going to be able to review this really very well but it's still there and it's doing its job as ever. The replay mode is I would say a little bit lackluster. I, I'm not really seeing much development here. It feels a little bit clunky, feels a bit slow. It does look good, but the angles are all the same as before. There's no real development here, and it's been like this for many, many years. There's a lack of spectator mode, so if you want to like host leagues and stuff like that, um, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. The tuning menus are nice and easy to, to use, and there are a couple of new settings, which is good to see. Photo mode, kind of like the replay mode is, uh, I would say it does the job, nothing too bad but a lack of development there's nothing new here and here we come to a final verdict on the game and my final verdict on it is 7.5 i think that's a really fair score i can't give it 9 or 10 because i don't think there's anything here that is genuinely groundbreaking or genre defining and that you know takes your breath away it's a game that does things very well but not in a spectacular fashion it covers a lot of bases with a lack of depth. The addition of weather, the tire compounds and the tire wear are really positive and it's a move in the right direction. Albeit, I would say that a lot of the implementation was done in a very simple manner. There's not much depth to it, not much detail to it. And that would be my overall review really of Forza Motorsport, which is there's a lot here. It does it very well in a very simple manner, but it doesn't do it in much detail or much depth. I still believe I will have a lot of fun with this game especially in multiplayer. I think the racing can be very close and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays out. There's a lot of playtime here in the single player, albeit it could get a bit repetitive at times. 
I say this is a solid addition to the franchise, nothing spectacular. It doesn't really seem to move Forza Motorsport forward a huge amount. But if they keep up the post-game support, then it could certainly develop into a far better game with much more content and more depth. And that's something I'm looking forward to. So I do hope you found this review useful. If you have any questions, please do ask down below. Get yourself subscribed. And I hope to see you on the track, probably at turn one upside down. I'll see you there.